It's nice to have an opportunity to chat to you again. Uh, Parliament has well and truly kicked off and we're in the thick of uh, question time, as you may have seen. Next week we're into recess, believe it or not, but then we're back into it uh, again. And it's been quite a, uh, a busy start to the year, a lot of different issues for the government to contend with. Today the Finance Minister delivered what's called the Budget Policy Statement. That's essentially just an update to say you know, what do the numbers look like uh, post the election period and all of the change that we've seen in Europe and the likes. And this is, the, I guess, the most definitive snapshot of our numbers from a government perspective until we roll into the budget which will be in May and so later in the year. Essentially what it shows is that New Zealand will continue to be in surplus in 2014-15 although it's a smaller surplus than was predicted when the books were open prior to the election. At that point it was roughly about a one and a half billion dollar surplus was the expectation and now it's 370 million so you can see that um, quite an impact on uh, as a result of uh, lower international growth rates uh, particularly in Europe. But I'd hasten to sort of add, um, the surplus or a deficit is the difference between two very large numbers. We're a big economy, around about $200 billion, and so a lot of things can, can move. But the government is very committed to getting back to surplus. And the reason why we're so committed is that as a, not so much as a country that we owe so much money or as a government, but it's uh, if the Christchurch earthquakes tour is one thing, it's that in the end, in the event of a catastrophe, it's the government that ultimately needs to uh, be able to provide support for communities in need. In the case of Christchurch, you know, it's a very, very large sum of money, and it's very important that the government has that flexibility. Um, secondly, when we are not borrowing money, that takes pressure off interest rates and takes pressure off the Reserve Bank Governor, and that ultimately leads to lower interest rates uh, for you as a consumer or as a business owner. So definitely some real benefits from good fiscal management, and that's not going to be easy for us to achieve. We have to work hard over the next three years. Uh, and the budget policy statement talks a little bit about how we might achieve that, but it's very much the plan that we've been talking about for quite some time, making sure the economy is more effective and efficient, delivering better public services, working on that target to getting back to surplus, rebuilding Christchurch and getting our economy going. So it's going to be an interesting year. Um, there's uh, a number of other things happening uh, on that front. Um, just in terms of overall debt, we continue to uh, meet our commitment not to be above 30% of GDP and um, to track back down to around about 20% in terms of debt levels, I think by about 2021. 20, so that's the picture there. Um, it's on a number of other fronts. Uh, obviously, I've been up to Waitangi uh, since we last had an opportunity to chat. I mean, I think you know one of the things I take away from that is that, um, in some one sense, you've got one or two people I think who are, in the public sense, hijacking uh, Waitangi Day for their own. Uh, private agenda. I think that's quite sad actually because for most New Zealanders they want to get out and celebrate what a great country New Zealand is and if you go around the country there are lots of festivals and events that are now happening on Waitangi Day. It's a happy time, it's a family time and it's a time to celebrate how good it is to be a New Zealander. But uh, the, the actions of one or two protesters on the Lower Marae are used as the way of defining the day and I think that's actually quite a sad sort of uh, state of affairs. Um, I'm keen to continue to return to the Marae each year. I could obviously stop going, but in my mind that would be giving in to you know, those protesters and you know, I really feel strongly that we should, if we can, at least try and continue to go so that we can engage as uh, one of the partners of the treaty on behalf of the Crown to engage in good dialogue uh, with Murray. So that's uh, been happening there. Uh, the, I guess the only other last comment I'd like to make is in relation to Lloyd Morrison. Uh, Lloyd very sadly passed away in the weekend. He'd been suffering from uh, cancer for uh, the last three years. Anyone that knows Lloyd will know what a tremendous uh, individual he was. A great family man, um, a great business person, and someone that cared passionately about New Zealand. I think when it came to Lloyd, um, you always knew what he thought. He was outspoken, uh, more than happy to ring me and tell me what he thought, um, and often did, uh, but always with the best intentions for making New Zealand a greater country. He's a very proud New Zealander. Um, he's invested in lots of different things to uh, make, uh, hopefully, our country better. He was a great donor to the arts and I think a visionary for the business that he was in. And he'll be very sadly missed. Um, our thoughts go to his wife, Julie, and, and his five children. Um, and I understand his funeral will be uh, sometime in the next uh, week or so. I'll, I'll certainly personally be attending. So uh, our greatest sympathies to the Morrison family.